Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Jessie. If you are new here, I do all kinds of lifestyle podcasts surrounding living my life here in North Carolina, but I also do a little bit of focus on chronic illness, which is actually what today's episode is going to be. Today is actually an episode of my podcast, Chronically Healing, but it's in video format because I'm talking with Lois Naherney of DNA Power. I got some lifestyle DNA tests done. So she goes through my actual DNA test with me and explains it and why it's important and how I can use it to better my body and for anybody that's interested in getting their own test. So I wanted to put this up on my YouTube channel just in case any of you are interested in learning about it. So that's what this next little piece is going to be. I wanted to intro it though, instead of just jumping into the podcast and you guys being like, what is, what is this? So I hope that you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's podcast. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Chronically Healing Podcast. I'm so excited for you all to be here today and I have a returning guest on Dr. Lois Naherney. Thank you so much for being back. Great. So glad to be here. Yeah. We're, so I'm excited. We, If you listen to our previous podcast, I will have it linked in the show notes so you can listen to it later if you'd like. But um, we talked all about DNA testing, lifestyle DNA testing. DNA Power is the company that you have. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and, and all about that so everybody that didn't listen understands. Oh, fantastic. Thanks so much for that, Jesse. Yeah, so um, I'm actually by background, a, a corporate executive. And in my 40s, I started to get sick. And I couldn't find solutions. I had restless leg syndrome, shortness of breath, heavy periods. Uh, I was just chronic fatigue and was really in bad shape to the point that I was hospitalized for two days of blood transfusions because I was about to collapse. And so I, I couldn't, I'd been to doctor after doctor for many, many years and ended up doing this lifestyle DNA test that suddenly gave me information into my unique genetics mm -hmm. that I went, that's, let's try that. And it showed me that I've got a couple of issues, one specifically in processing vitamin Bs and metabolizing them from my body um, and some issues on lactose, which had added to my weight gain. And so on the vitamin Bs, just started taking a lot of vitamin B methylated uh, that my body could access more easily. And within two to four weeks here, these years of health issues had really gone away. Um, and to this day, I have to take it like a, you know, a, a medicine, I need vitamin Bs in, a, in higher quantities in order for my body to function. And so when I went through that experience, and then I learned that I have lactose issues, pulled out lactose and, and you know, dropped the, the weight I'd been gaining over, over my 40s. So I thought, how could it have been this easy to solve these health problems? And nobody talked about diet, food, nutrition, and easier ways to, to solve them. Um, so I uh, got involved with the company, I ended up um, becoming the owner of it. And I have this DNA lifestyle testing company. And our entire purpose is how can we help you understand your unique body, your unique genetics, to give you a roadmap to be and stay healthier. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about things you can do something about we're talking about what foods should you be eating right for your body? What sort of things do you need to do to stay healthy of your lifetime? So it's amazing. We help people every day and uh, really excited for what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. And I loved getting to know your story last time. And I mean, it totally inspired me to, as we're going to talk about today, um, go through my own DNA testing. And I know that it inspired a bunch of you guys to, um, listeners here that to also do the test. So I'm excited to, to go through that. Is there, is there anything else about DNA power or anything you'd like to let the listeners know first before we dive in? Well, just that it's super easy. So it was just, we mailed you a cheek swab, you rubbed the inside of your cheek, sent it back and we um, sent you your results. And we're going to, for those that are watching on um, video, you'll be able to actually see Jesse's results. Mm -hmm. We present the results in green and red and you get an action plan that says, here's what you specifically need to do for your unique body. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is you don't have to change everything. We try and tell you this is the stuff you have to do because this is where your body needs more support. So mm -hmm. that's just so that people know this is pretty easy to do. 
Oh yeah. Super easy. I, my husband did one as well. And it was like super quick, just had to send it right on back. And, and the tests, as you guys will see, um, the results are really easy to read and understand. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, if that's okay, we're going to dive in then, Jesse, and I'm going to share my screen mm -hmm. um, and we are going to take a look at your results. And so if, if for anybody who has uh, been involved or ordered or looked at this, you know, we started, we have, we, we organize it into four areas because honestly, there's just so much amazing information. And so we start with diet. Diet is the foundation of health. This is the, di it, diet is how we should, we keep our immunity up during this crazy last year of pandemic we've been living in. When you have a strong body, strong health, strong system, viruses can't take hold. Yep. It, it's just very difficult for that to happen. And so you want to give your entire body um, all the support you can in order to um, give yourself, just keep yourself happy and healthy. So this is your diet power results here. We're going to, we, we tell you a little bit about DNA. We get into just how to read the report, but basically it's, it's set up for green and red. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, if it's green, it means you've got normal genes. And if it's red, then you need to be focused on um, the, those are the areas you want to pay extra attention to. And wherever it's 50% red or more, we have a set of recommendations that you can take a look at that'll specifically say what you need to be doing. So it's interesting when we look at yours, Jesse, you have a very interesting set of DNA. <laughs> and you have a few areas that are a challenge, which very likely could be contributors to some of the chronic um, illness that you've been dealing with. And now tell me a little bit more. You have Hashimoto's, correct? Yeah. Hashimoto's chronic headaches, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so some of that, I think we'll be able to see when we look at the results, some of it will be intuitive for you and some of it will be okay. This might be what some of the root causes of why I'm having some challenges. I do want to add that our DNA is fixed, but it reacts completely to our epigenetics or our lifestyle and how we treat it. And so if you've got a weak set of, of DNA or things that have got a variation, it's okay. You mm. work around it and you keep your body completely healthy. So that's why this is so important. Mm -hmm. So taking a look at when we look here at this overall graph, you can see it's quite red on carbohydrates and red on saturated fat. And we're going to start just on the upper area here. What that says is you do have to be careful with the carbs you eat. You need to have a low glycemic index type of carbohydrate because it has a tendency to react a little bit more with your body in terms of insulin and other. And so you want to be doing high quality carbs. I'm a believer in carbs, even for those who, um, who choose to do, you know, uh, keto, mm -hmm. um, you have a, mm, you have a mixed profile for a keto diet you have got very good unsaturated fat genes, um, but you, you really have to be careful with saturated fats. Mm -hmm. And so it would be, it would be, you know, while you've got, um, this is often a person, if they've got really green in fats and red in carbs, we say, yes, you can go more towards a keto type of diet. Mm -hmm. um, um, you've got very good protein genes. So protein is a good source of, of, um, of uh, energy and, and strength for you. But here you're gonna to have to figure out how to manage this balance of keeping saturated fats down and very high quality carbs in your diet. Mm -hmm. So two really important things. Interesting here though, you have on LDL cholesterol, it doesn't flag to 50% because you've got two um, protecting genes, but you actually have a pair of genes in there. And I, I uh, you know, as do, when we do the readings, we go into the back of the report to the actual genetic results. You have a pair of genes that we're gonna see show up later in your report because they um, affect uh, cholesterol and placking in your system. Mm -hmm. And they show up in your results heavily in the, in the area around mental wellness. Um, but you should be aware that you have LDL cholesterol genes that have a tendency to plaque. Mm. And so being aware of cardiovascular for you is going to be super, super important. Mm. Now, tell me a little bit about some of your, I'm, I'm going to do a couple of things. Then I want to hear a little bit about maybe your family and whether any of this is, is evident. I also see here on body mass index, it's really quite red. This is a, a set of genes that's been text tested very heavily and people who have variations will have a little bit harder time with, with BMI. And so a couple of questions, has your family had any issues with cardiovascular or with, with weight? Yes. So my mom deals with both and um, we definitely have cardiovascular issues in the family, in both sides of my family and um, the body mass index issue. The, the weight gain is definitely an issue that I deal with. 
um, that I've kind of always just blamed on my Hashimoto's, but also my dad's side of the family also. So, so yeah, it's definitely shown up for sure. Well, and again, I think the great thing here is even when you have the genes, you can work around them. It does not mean that you, you know, that there, that, that it's a, it, it's, it's a sentence or it's a, you know, you're locked into it. But that's why we want to know our genetics because this is how you get the opportunity to work with your body, not against it. Mm -hmm. And so in knowing that you just have to know that when you do eat poorly, you have a higher risk of it coming on weight wise, and you've got a higher risk of it um, leading towards BMI, but you've got some good news. The stored body fat genes are actually superb. Mm -hmm. And so your body doesn't really want to store it. There is some BMI issues and it might sound a bit contradictory, but your body doesn't, it's, it doesn't, it's got good genes that says, no, I'm going to deal with this. And so the BMI will only come around if you're eating poorly for, for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you, you want to watch your risk. And so let's just see where, where else we've got some, some clues here. So we've looked at your macronutrients, your body mass index. We're moving now to taking a look over at um, it's important food tolerances, gluten, lactose, salt, and sugar. Mm -hmm. And you'll see your lactose is 50-50, which means you need to be a little bit careful about your dairy. Mm -hmm. Over time, it can lead to inflammation or to weight gain. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be quite modest in, in your lactose. Salt, definite challenge. If you've got cardiovascular, do not eat table salt. You want to be having a little bit of mineralized or natural salts that come with foods, um, but just be very careful about, about that. And interesting, your gluten here, you had the same thing with cholesterol, where you've got a pair of genes that kind of are, are protective and support, but you've got a pair in there that are a risk gene that are linked to celiac. And so tell me about gluten for you. Do, how do you respond overall gluten or celiac? Have you tested for any of that? So I tested for celiac, oh my gosh, probably 10 years ago now, and it came back negative, but I actually just intuitively took gluten out after just noticing how it made me feel. But then also, um, with Hashimoto's, it can be a trigger for antibodies, um, stuff like that. So I had cut out gluten a while ago. Uh, what's interesting though, is in the last, I don't know, like year I have dabbled, like I've tried it every now and then to see how it goes. And my, I mean, I just, uh, my inflammation goes immediately. <laughs> so, so it's something that I, I rare, I don't eat unless it's accidental. Right. And, you know, um, so with your, again, your gluten didn't flag, but it should have, because you've got, you've got, again, this, this, we do a combination of genes to try and give you a sense. But when I dig into the back, you've got one combination that does show up in celiac, a pair that don't and a pair that do, which is why you probably sometimes tested for it and sometimes don't, mm -hmm. but it is an area for you to be careful of. Um, we have learned about gluten that our North American um, grains have been modified and have very high gluten content. Often the ancient grains out of Europe have used the old seeds. They are a little bit safer to do. And mm. so if you can get some very, if you can get kind of more ancient grain, you might be able to get away with it a little bit, but truly you want to be careful because you also have inflammation genes, which we'll see later. And again, you've just got to be um, really careful about that. Yeah. When we look here at food taste and preference, you know, it's, it's just, um, you, do you drink coffee? I actually just cut coffee out, <laughs> but I was drinking it. You've got great genes for that, for metabolizing coffee, but you've got genes that make you want to drink more of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is why I cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a preference, probably, you know, you'd probably like the taste of fat, some of it in your diet. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to be aware that you've got some taste preferences that uh, will lead you in that the rest are all normal. Um, and hopefully you don't smoke, especially mm -hmm. with cardiovascular, because if you did, you'd be more likely to smoke more than most. Okay. Yeah, okay. don't do that. So we're good. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. <laughs> Terrific. And we're going to take a look then at your vitamins. And you'll see here when we look at where is it reddest, it's red on B6 and B9. And now these were areas I had issues in specifically, not the 12, which is where they can test more easily when you do blood testing. 
And so doctors were trying to give me to get my iron up B12, but I needed B6 and B9 to convert the 12 to convert the iron to get the oxygen, you know, because all of these things work together symbiotically. So I take large amounts of six and nine specifically, and based on your results here, those are things you may want to consider. Mm -hmm. And specifically when we see um, women with this profile who are contemplating having a family, these, you, you just want to take way above the recommended daily allowances if you're working on fertility. Now, I don't know if that's something that's important to you, um, mm -hmm. but if you are considering it any time that, then that's important. Okay. Yeah. And um, we see here you're, you're fairly high on vitamin D um, and A. So D, you want to be getting sunshine and sunlight. Hopefully you can tolerate that. The sun is just beautiful vitamin D. Also important during this time because it's antiviral. Mm. And so that's why we don't have virus or flus and COVID as much in the summer, just because it's just beautiful for our bodies. Our bodies are producing D, the viral, the sun, you know, responds to that. And so in your case, vitamin D needs support. I would, you know, I usually recommend a liquid vitamin D then for, for people, especially in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, the rest aren't too bad. Looks like iodine. It's interesting because again, you've got thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. Has iodine ever come up for you in your testing? Um, it's never been super off, but it has been something that we've talked about supplementing and I just haven't yet. So, right. You can find it added in like it's again, mm -hmm. yours comes up a little bit high. And so you just want to watch your balance over time. Um, do not get iodized salt. That's the wrong place <laughs> to get your iodine from. Um, but you can maybe find some other things just to be sure you're boosting it on occasion and supporting it. And then you'll see here at the bottom that omega fatty acids, this is an area that's a bit red. So really healthy omegas are just fantastic for you. You can get them not only from, um, you know, fatty fish sources, you can also be getting it from chia seeds and, and hemp seeds and other things and smoothies that can just be really great to, to give a little bit more um, plant-based uh, omegas available to you. That was actually interesting for me to see because I've noticed um, I've been switching around just what I'm eating lately to see how my body reacts to it before I even got these tests. And I have been noticing that I was craving more of like fish or hemp seed, like just, I, I was craving more of that kind of Mediterranean type diet. So it was just interesting um, that this popped up. And you know what, this is where you really have to listen to your body. Our bodies are intuitive. As long as you haven't got your gut out of balance and craving sugar and fat. Yeah. <laughs> when you see yourself craving something healthy, mm -hmm. it, it's your body. It is talking to you and you're now listening to your natural body's wisdom and intuition. And so really encourage people to get so in touch with your body. Mm -hmm. Um, You'll find that for both those who are on lactose, I have so many of my clients who complain going, I was fine on lactose, even though it's bad for me and inflammation. But now when I have it, I just go. Yeah. Once they pulled it out, your body cleans up and now it's um, response mechanisms improve. Mm -hmm. And so just, you know, when it, you just know, as you pull some of these things out of your diet, your body does create a better ability to respond because it's not in a fight or flight mode quite so much. So there's a few things in here. These are always, you know, when you have ones that are just under the 50%, I always say, add them to your action plan page, print out your action plan page. We see here on carbs for you, Jesse, you want, you know, low glycemic in, um, carbs, lower carbs. So you want whole fruits, vegetables, healthy grains, if it works for you, um, you know, beans, lentils, legumes, and absolutely you need to avoid processed carbohydrates it will really contribute to um, weight gain and to inflammation for you. Okay. So clean, clean carbs, really important. And then, and then the next here is avoid eating a diet high in saturated fats. And so things you can include in your diet, flax seed oil, hemp seeds, leafy greens, walnuts, and chia seeds, wonderful such, you know, um, uh, foods that are unsaturated fats, which your body loves. Mm -hmm. Do you do seeds and nuts? Um, not as much as I should, to be honest. <laughs> you know what? I always have this little Kilimanjaro mix of seeds and nuts mm. and things going right by my desk. I use that just to keep myself, um, uh, keeping some of those things up. So would, would suggest it as a really great snack food for you. Cool. Great. And then lactose, moderate that down, consider alternatives like Coke, uh, you know, coconut, cashew, almonds, uh, be careful with rice or soy. It depends again on inflammation, but those things can just, just support by pulling some of that out. 
if a person, um, you know, really likes their cheeses, look for cheeses that um, have their own bacteria to, to break themselves down because mm -hmm. your gut doesn't have quite enough support. But you have the split genes. So sometimes it'll be okay for you and sometimes it won't. Okay. Yeah. And then salt, absolutely limit your salt intake. And then here we can see some of the vitamins, just as a reminder, again, print this out, remind yourself that these are the things that you need. It's amazing how we sometimes um, go, yeah, yeah, I'll remember it. And then we go, what was I supposed to do again? Yeah. <laughs> so print it out, make your notes. And for years, you also have to watch cholesterol and you've got to keep the gluten down. Okay. So in these reports, for anybody who's just looking, you can see we've got just kind of the dashboard, the action plan, and then there's just pages and pages of information behind all of this. It gives you more information so you can dive in. And really, you just need to focus on the areas where your genes are really red. And then that's the areas you need to learn more about. And then we've got, we, we have um, the actual gene results at the very back. And that's where I always take a, an extra look just to see if there's anything in there just to be in particular aware of. So, but again, the goal is if and you get your results, um, just print your action plan page and you've got your plan. Yeah. And just so that you know, for anyone who, who does consider this, we always, uh, if you get the, the total power, all of the tests, we include a, a consult with a nutritionist, um, should you choose. Yes. Great. Uh, okay, we're going to take a look at something called health power and health power is the um, areas that support all the diet and things behind. And so it includes detoxification, hormones, methylation and inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the back body processes that we kind of hear about when we're, you know, learning about our, you know, diet, nutrition and health. And yet we, we don't have a lot of visibility into. So when we look at yours, you have very good uh, detoxification genes, but just one phase is a problem for you in detoxifying and that's meth methylation. And mm -hmm. we're going to go take a look at that. And that's just how well it manages some of these uh, metabol areas like dopamine, epinephrine which is adrenaline, um, noradrenaline and estrogen. And so it just doesn't quite break those up the way it should in your body. And so, you know, sometimes bees actually can be a good support, good leafy greens and other things will support that. We'll look at the recommendations. Your hormones, not bad. It's, this is a pretty, uh, this is a, a, you know, a, a solid profile, but you can see on, on um, your hormone health, that how you regulate some of the estrogens and androgens in your body needs potentially a bit of support and how you eliminate it out of your body also could probably use a bit of support. And so for again, uh, women in particular who have issues with their menstrual cycles, trying to get pregnant, et cetera, we look at a few of these things to see, are you, have you got an imbalance potentially of hormones that might be coming into your body based on the diets that we have? Mm. I mean, our food is pumped with antibiotics and, and hormones. And, and it, it, if you have weaker genes here, it stays in your body and mm -hmm. it, it creates an imbalance. And so, you know, especially if you're trying to get uh, pregnant, we really recommend, you know, go organic, super clean foods, reduce the meats in your diet, just to be sure you're not getting um, some over influence. And if you do want the pill, be really careful about how you're feeling and whether it does work for your body or not. Mm -hmm. So just be really aware. Yours are not too bad, but you just would be wanting to be aware of it. Okay. Inflammation, one here on in inflammatory tumor response. It just means that your body um, with a, it uh, will overreact in inflammation, which I suspect you maybe have experienced with a bit of some of the chronic disease. Oh yeah. The inflammation is, is a consistent, um, it's consistently when my body is trying to tell me something's going on for sure. So I've dealt with that a lot. Right. And so you do have slightly overactive um, inflammation genes, but they're doing it to protect you. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to send you a message. So we have to listen to, you know, really to what it's trying to tell us. And then you have some very good and some um, areas of methylation that could use some support. In general, your B12s are quite good in your body, but there's a few areas where the Bs could be provided a little bit of support just to help the cells access all of the energy from your food and do all the processes that they're supposed to. That's what, what methylation is. It's just really helping your cells to be their healthiest and, and to be able to do their job. And so when we look at recommendations, it's just saying, you know, have a diet that's really rich in bees. And so that's things like spinach, kale, arugula, any dark leafy greens, just pile it into your diet. Um, and if you are feeling you need some support, 
uh, for people who don't access bees, there's something called methylated bees. It just releases it a bit more easily in your body. So that's something you can look for at the health food store. When we look at hormones, you just really need to be sure your produce and your meats are free of you know, herbicides, pesticides, antibiotics, and hormones. And we always remind people, move to glass in your home, not plastics where you can. And you want to be careful your household chemicals aren't creating an effect for you. So it can trigger your hormones. And so you just want really clean household products. Mm -hmm. And again, with the thyroid, I would think that that's really important for you as well. And it's, oh, yeah. there's so many great natural products now. Oh my gosh. I just love the peppermints and things that I have in some of them now. Oh, there it's better than anything we ever had before. I know. <laughs> I agree. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then on the inflammation, the tumor response, again, it's, it's repeating. We're already getting consistent messages for your body. You need the greens, you need fish, which we've already seen on the omegas to support the inflammation and on the next test coming up on, on one of them on the brain. Mm -hmm. um, and turmeric, uh, berries, fish and nuts, you know, vitamin A, E and fish. Interesting. Those are the ones you needed some support on your vitamins are on. And so again, go back and read that, make sure you're getting those vitamins in your diet because our soils are so weak, Jesse, I'm a big advocate that most people should supplement. Now mm -hmm. um, we just can't get it in our food supply. Our soils are depleted. Our foods are made to be fast growing and look good. And they just don't have the same content. And so I'm a big advocate of take a multi, take a D take an omega every day. If you're a woman um, in my age range, so most women after the um, late forties need a B, they just can't get enough from their bodies. Or if you have it showing up in your DNA or are feeling tired, mm -hmm. um, you know, you need a B support. So those are kind of ones I really just believe everybody should be considering. And your DNA just shows you where it's even more important. Yes. Yeah. Great. And so again, you know, remember to print these pages out, take a look, we've got some on methylation here, um, things that you need to get if, if uh, somebody's vegan, look for, you know, nutritional yeast potentially to add into the diet just to get a little bit more. Um, eggs are good, you know, just to get some of that protein that you need, that's a, a healthy form of it. Um, and, you know, things like chickpeas, pistachios, bananas, potatoes, there's just lots of really good recommendations of foods to uh, make sure you're getting plenty of uh, within your diet. Perfect. Yeah, Great. this is so helpful, especially for someone like me, I've been on so many diets, either self-inflicted or, you know, SIBO or keto or all these different things. Um, so it's just helpful to look and it's helping me really be able to trust my own intuitive like, like I was talking about, like I intuitively was like, I feel like I should be eating more fish. I've, I just don't feel like I should be eating as much red meat. Like it just didn't, that's just what felt right. So this is really helpful to help me like trust that intuitive pull of what my body's trying to tell me. You know, you really just hit on one of the things that we find most important. It's so hard to trust a diet when you're guessing. Yeah. But when, right. And how to stick to it. And yeah. then if you're doing this, you know, you've got the evidence that says, oh yeah, I got to keep doing this. Yeah. I got to stick with it. In fact, it's really exciting. I mean, it could be a whole different um, episode, but we, there's new studies that have just come out that are showing the, that people who were on a keto diet versus a DNA diet, mm -hmm. the keto diet lost more weight in the initial period, but when they hit the one and a half, the one year, one and a half year and two year, the ketos had all started to reverse way sooner because it's so hard to stay on. And the DNA diet people continue to lose weight and keep it off mm. over the long term. And that's because two things, one, the, 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 that you know, you're doing it and it's specifically geared for your body. Mm. And second is because it's easier. You're not trying to do everything. You're trying yeah. to just do this stuff. Yeah. You're not, you know, the diets can get so complicated, but you've got your roadmap that this is the stuff you have to do specifically. Yeah. 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 Super helpful. And so we love it that there's actually finally now studies going out, coming out and showing that this, this is the way to go. If you're really trying to deal with weight loss and pinpoint where's the chronic disease coming from, or what are the underlying factors to a chronic disease? And if I do these food choices, how can I support it to make it less of an issue for me? Mm-hmm. Great. So we're going to take a look at fit power. Um, you have lovely fitness genes, just saying. <laughs> so uh, Fitness is a great way for you to support uh, metabolism and weight. 
Um, you, uh, your genes show the first two are endurance and power. They're mutually exclusive. If you have one, there's a set of genes that make you inclined for the other. And you, uh, your body is more geared for endurance activities. So yoga, running, cycling, swimming, things like that, as opposed to sprinting superpower, mm. you're likely to get better results here. What have you found in your workouts? Um, I actually was dealing with some like extreme burnout from fitness because I, I had been doing a lot of the more like very physical hit classes or, you know, extreme lifting and stuff like that. But what I've noticed is what I actually enjoy doing and what feels good are slower movements. So I really like going for very long walks or hikes. I like, um, cycling. I like lifting, but more like little bit more chill than what I used to do. <laughs> so that's been really helpful. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. Do you know what that is? Your body is just going to respond better. It's built for that. Mm -hmm. And I, I had found the same thing because a lot of fitness trainers go into it because they love power and yeah. they love the weights and they love the gym. And so they, they try and give you their routine that works for them. And it was, it would just exhaust me. I just couldn't do that power. And, and, uh, I've got some different genes in here, but I need, I need lighter weights, long sets to do mm -hmm. well. And I need, and so, you know, I think you're finding a bit of that as well. Um, you actually have great muscle strength. So you have the ability to do better weights, yeah. um, but you do need better repair. So your re repair genes just say, give a bit more time between workouts mm -hmm. for the muscle to repair and nourish it. So do some of the supplementation and foods to give your body more nourishment to repair those muscles. So that's one of the only things that shows up for you. Believe me, you've got good ligaments, tendons, muscle strength your blood pressure, energy availability, um, metabolism and oxygen are all great. So you are, you are set up physically to be a very, to be great at good, just regular, lovely exercise, but you don't need to do the big power, the big power things. Yeah. You're you probably feel better just going with what feels good to you. Yeah. And reminding that it doesn't need to be every day. Cause like when I used to be really into fitness, I, I love it, loved it so much, but I was, you know, I was doing super high intensity, like five or six days a week. And I was like, well, no wonder I burnt myself out. So, so this kind of helps, um, confirm that, I guess. Well, and interesting, cause we saw your detoxification genes and your adrenaline genes. There was a challenge in how that's processed. Mm -hmm. And, and detoxifying and you've got muscle repair that needs some repair to occur in between. Yeah. And so, you know, yours is you should go, you know, you can work out hard and really get up your heart rate. Um, but you want to be sure that you're getting yoga or something in between. Mm. So take a day and do something that's just a bit different, but we do have one big flag on your fitness report mm -hmm. and that's your stroke risk. Mm. Um, so there's, the, it, it, it's not, I mean, it's all red, but it looks, it's not as bad as it looks. It's based on two genes. One, the one related to salt and another one that is directly linked to studies on a particular uh, stroke gene that shows up in many people who have had something called ischemic stroke. And so again, this is linked into the cardiovascular and the placking, and you just want to be really careful about this placking, uh, gene that you've got that just, in, you know, you just want to know that that's the case. And so you know, years and years from now, because you're going to be super, super healthy, um, mm -hmm. because you know, all this stuff now, yeah. um, should anything occur, you do, you just need to let your, you know, your doctor know that you do have a placking, uh, you know, that it can occur in your arteries and that, and just to watch for it. I had a, a gal who did this, this last week, who just told me because I had this information here in her 40s, she ended up with a stroke, but because she knew it, she could talk to them about the issue. And she says, I think it actually saved my life. Oh, wow it was just crazy that she actually was now aware and knew that when these symptoms came up, she better go have it looked at not to, to just poo poo it. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. And so here are your recommendations, you know, get engaged in, you know, jogging, swimming, aerobic, other things, don't overtrain your muscles, allow time between, um, like lots of fluid when you're working out before and after is important. And just be careful that you don't overdo it as you age, because you do want to keep monitoring your cholesterol levels mm -hmm. and just watching where those come to, in particular, the, the LDL cholesterol sugar is a big thing that impacts cholesterol. So just be really aware of that. Okay. Okay, again, lots of pages behind, but those are your summaries. And now we go into the last one here, which is brain. This one here is, um, 
It's saying you have got this great opportunity to use your health to keep yourself super healthy for the rest of your lifetime mm -hmm. with respect to your brain. Yeah. And so you'll see your on this report, the Alzheimer's and the concussion are very red. And that's linked to this set of combination of genes that you have that that either we find in families can lead to cardiovascular disease or to dementia or Alzheimer's and or both. Mm -hmm. In your family, has there been any history of any Alzheimer's or dementia? Yes, my grandma had dementia. Right. And so diet plays a big role. Now, I don't know what type of diet she had, but we're, we're, we're calling dementia and Alzheimer's now basically diabetes three. Mm -hmm. And it's because we need just if you eat right, this does this won't ever become a problem. Mm -hmm. And you can live to be 120 and it won't be a problem. But what it is, is it's your, your, it's your flag that says, be aware if you don't eat according to what your body needs, you do run a higher risk in this area. Mm -hmm. And so for anyone in your family, you know, somewhere there's going to be a combination on both sides based on the, the gene combination you have here. Um, you'll want to watch, you know, saturated fats. If people are doing lots of barbecuing and lots of steak meals and other things, they're going to have to bring down saturated fats. Fish are a wonderful thing to be adding to the diet. And so you really want clean, good sources of, um, of you know, ocean fish, um, taking the omega E's, the, the, again, the flax, hemp seed oils, etc. And you will never have a problem and you will be super healthy. And so while it's a, a red flag here, it's the, it's the invitation to um, really just make sure you're having a, a, a clean diet. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely was when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's terrifying, <laughs> especially, you know, because I, I know and watched my grandma go through dementia. So it's scary, but it's, it's really empowering to know that there are things that I can do now as a 33 year old and make sure that I am setting myself up for the best results as I get older, that I'm taking care of myself and with food, lifestyle, all that kind of stuff. Completely. There are so many studies showing now how people with these genes, you know, diet will is completely solves the problem. Like it's just beautiful. So you are totally, you are definitely setting yourself up in a, in a positive way. I do want to add that um, because uh, Alzheimer's and concussion are linked, what happens is if somebody gets a concussion, the placking comes and stays and it doesn't get out of the brain as easily. And so if you ever have a concussion in your life, seek immediate um, assistance and don't let someone tell you it'll just be okay. You want to do things to support the ability for your brain to clear. Mm -hmm. And there's many beautiful new uh, concussion protocols that are available. And so just be aware you want to research the heck out of that if mm -hmm. something ever happens for you or somebody in your family, because someone in your family will have some combination of these genes similarly as well. Okay. You can see cortisol is just a little bit raised. Interesting. That's linked into this adrenaline thing you talked about and into that clearing. And mm -hmm. so there's just, you just want to be, you know, yoga would be a very good thing for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some meditation. We're seeing that meditation is beautiful for clearing the mind, stopping the constant churning, allowing it to be still that allows the processes to really rejuvenate. It's just beautiful for everybody to do. So encourage uh, you to include that as well. Mm -hmm. And I see there's just a little bit red on emotional eating. It's just one gene, but it just says be aware. It's yeah. sometimes linked into the BMI piece as well. And so just just be aware that food doesn't become the, you know, it, it, you've got healthy food around that if, if you're feeling like um, you're stressed, go and find something healthy or, you know, go make a smoothie or something great. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely, I've felt like emotional eating has popped up for me from time to time when things are very stressful um, or very bad, but they're not, it's not something that's like an ongoing issue, but it does pop up for me sometimes in those super stressful times. Yeah. Well, and you know what, again, this is all just about being aware and validating it and then going, aha, oh, that's what this is about. Some of my, my genes are, are in here and I need to be sure that I am taking power over my health personally. Mm -hmm. And so in uh, some of the recommendations, tuna, salmon, trout, they, they're better, healthier fish in general, um, omega-3 oils, coconut oil, MCT oils, you know, again, you can take the, un the polys and the unsaturated fats, your body can manage just not the saturated as well. Um, and um, yeah, we talked about some of the other things here. 
So, you know, that's kind of the, the quick, you know, there's actually great foods. I will just show you on the APOE page. What we do is we talk about how your genes link. You are what's called an APOE. I'm just looking at this here. Um, just looking at my map, TTCC, T, you are in um, C, 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 anyway, sorry, I can't find it. You're an E3, E4. Yeah. risk. And so you just want to be aware. And then there's a few more, you know, blueberries, dark leafy greens, spinach, kale, sweet potatoes, coffee, tea, interestingly, can help just with how does it help with the brain, mm -hmm. um, vegetables, nuts, berries, beans, whole grains, olive oil, and wine. <laughs> <laughs> so the Mediterranean diet really is yeah. <laughs> a very, very healthy diet. 30 minutes of exercise a day, really fabulous for your brain. It just gets the blood going. And, you know, brain activities too are a super positive thing. So great. So those are just some of the, uh, the areas just to tell you a little bit more about. Yeah, I appreciate this so much. And I have loved doing this testing. I feel like it's given me so much information. And then obviously talking with you has given me even more um, information. And I think that's like, that's the whole point of it really. And I think any of us, any of you listening on the podcast, but like anybody dealing with chronic illness or just wanting to take care of their health, it's important to, to have like known facts that you can move forward with and you can, you can try out and you know that it's actually your body. It's not like you said before, it's not just, you know, a diet that you're trying because everybody else is trying, but actually paying attention to what works best for you. You know what we you think about how do we manage our health It's just by habit and culture and guessing this is one of the few areas you have data about your body everybody at some point everyone in the world will have will this will be so commonplace and we'll all know it but in the meantime if you're dealing with health issues or food issues or weight issues or you just want to be your healthiest self why wouldn't you spend, you know, a few hundred dollars for anybody who checks out our website, it's actually Canadian dollars. It's cheaper than it looks. Yeah. <laughs> we have a $50 off uh, for any of your um, viewers and listeners yeah. that are interested in this, Jesse, if they want to try it out. And as I said, we do have support that's available with nutritionists to review the results. I think you provide support to people as well. And mm -hmm. in terms of advising. And so there's just great ways to go at taking power over your health, using data and really based on, you know, an N of one, just you, your unique information. Yeah. Yeah. It's super, it's wonderful. I'm so glad that I came across you guys and I had you on my podcast a few months ago because this has been really helpful for me. And I know that it'll be helpful for my listeners. In fact, I know a few of them have already taken up on it and have signed up and gotten their tests. So, so that's super exciting, but I will have the link on the screen of this video, but I'll also have it in the show notes for anybody that's listening to the podcast version of this, but but yeah, is there anything else you'd like to let the listeners know about, about the tests or anything like that? Nope. Just again, super easy, fun to do, learn about your body. Um, why not have a roadmap for your health? Um, if you do have questions, be sure, you know, you're welcome to get them to me or to Jesse, just in terms of how do you take it? It, you know, we also say that it's not the be all end all. It, it is just this beautiful, super important jigsaw piece of the puzzle that will give you insight into your unique body, but it gives you that foundational information to be able to help you choose best uh, to manage your health. So we always say, you know, be healthy, take power over your health. And uh, this is such an important time. And when you do, we know your immunity is going to be up. We don't have to have any fear for some of the viruses and things that go around. We're all just going to be super healthy. Oh, I have got one extra ad though. If anybody's interested, I have a whole set of tips and tricks for if you're worried about the, uh, about uh, COVID or the virus mm. or any immunity things on the DNA power blog, a whole bunch of the remedies and things that you can do if you think you've been exposed or want to keep your immunity up just because it's so topical in that right now. Um, yeah. So invite you to go look at that. I think I had COVID in March and these are all the things that I did um, to, to deal with that. Perfect. That sounds like an awesome resource. So I'll make sure to link that too for everyone. But thank you so much for being on and reading through my results and, and giving everybody a taste of what it would look like if they were to get their own test. Awesome. And looking forward to going through with your husbands. And at any point, if we want to have a podcast and people want to ask questions, happy to do that too. Perfect. Thank you so Perfect. much. Terrific. Thanks so much, Jesse.